Good morning, this is Dr. Harding, and I'm here to bring you moments of inspiration. That's right, moments of inspiration. And I'm sorry that I'm a little late this morning getting started, a uh, little technical problem here, but I thank God for you that's going to tune in to moments of inspiration. And if you're with me, I'd like for you to let me know uh, by start tapping in here uh, that and I want to let you know that I am grateful for God for moments of inspiration. That's right, moments of inspiration. Now, let me tell you, uh, let me make a disclaimer before I pray and start the message today, that if you don't have any problem and you everything is just okay and everything is just working out for you fine and everything, you haven't had any problem, any situation, then this message is not for you. But if you are one of the millions that are having problems, situations, things have changed, you've had to make some adjustments in your life, then this is a message for you. That's right. It's a message for you. And I want to share and bring with you moments of inspiration. That's right. Not moments of frustration, but moments of inspiration. Father, I thank you that you, God, are who you say you are. I thank you, God, that you know everything. God, you're everywhere and you have all power. And I'm praying now, God, for those that are watching. Thank you, Sister Philip. Those that are watching and those that's going to tune in, God, uh, even at a later time, that you would bless them, that you would let this message, God, penetrate their heart. Let it be relevant for them, God, that they would be inspired, enhanced, and enlightened. And I pray, Father, that every yoke will be broken, every stronghold will be pulled down, and your word will have a free course. This, Father, I ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you this morning, and thank you for tuning in to more Moments of inspiration. And as I said in the beginning, listen, this is what I want to make. I want to make this statement. If you uh, have not had any trouble, any problem in these last, uh, 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 in this last 15 months, and you haven't had no problem, this is not a message for you. This is a message for people that is like myself, that have had some problems, that had some decision we had to make. Some of them was not easy. Some of them was gut feeling. Some of them kept you up a little time. You had to put some prayer in. So if you're not in that situation, you do not need this message. You just want to blank out right now and say, call. everything for me is going all right. I had no trouble. My children is all fine. My loved ones is fine. And it's, everything is just okay. So you don't need this message. But now you that are like me, had some struggles, some problem, hang in here. Well, I, I believe that we can help ourselves together today because I'm going to talk to you about, and, and this is what I'm going to talk to you about. I'm going to talk to you about uh, uh, digging yourself out of depression, digging yourself out of depression. How do you dig yourself out of depression? Well, there's a way that you do that. You do that through the love of God, through God's word. You dig yourself out of depression. Now, note what Paul says here. And looking at uh, 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 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8 through verse 9. Note what Paul says, Sister Miller. Uh, I thank God for you watching this morning. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are, we are, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Now, Paul wasn't talking to someone, uh, uh, he was talking to himself as well as other, and he wasn't talking to somebody that didn't have trouble. He was talking to folks that had trouble and didn't know how to handle their trouble. And so that's what he was saying to them. He said, listen, so we are in trouble. Trouble, what is trouble? Trouble is to be hurting. Trouble is to be somebody putting pressure on you. Trouble is the thing that causes you to, to do stuff that you didn't want to do. It's a difficult problem. It's a lot of problems that we have it. So I want, to, I want to ask you this question. And if you have an answer to this question, uh, uh, Shakur, if you have an answer to this question, then you can make it. Well. But in the fast, in the in, in in the past few months, all of us have had some 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 have been in, exposed to information about terrorists. Not only terrorists throughout the world, we heard about them in Paris, even in our homeland, New York, California, and other places in the United States. Terrorists in these last few months, more of these few year, last few years than ever. 
and there's trouble in our schools. They shooting our schools up and our colleges and our workplace even today in San, in San Jose. There's a place that was shot up. We don't know how many people that was killed, but we was, they were shot up, shot, shot, shot and killed people. Some is, I don't know how many casualty. I haven't been able to catch it all uh, because I've been making my preparation for you today. But all of these things are happening right while, while I am speaking. Crisis have caused most of us, as if not all of us, some depression. We have some depression. So what do we mean by depression? What is depression? Well, depression is simply, if I want to make it simple put, is a state of mental tension and worry caused by problems in our life. It's a state of mental tension. It's a mate of a mental depression, tension, worry caused by our life workplace. Sometimes things cause strong feelings of worry or anxiety that cause us physical or mental force of pressure. So all of us is under some kind of pressure. Pressure, let me, let me give you some examples now, and, and don't, don't get upset with me. It, it constrains us. Uh, when we are under pressure, it constrains us or influences us and, and forces us to pull or push against something compressing or something or twisted or do something different than we've been doing. So this, this, these thing, COVID, uh, co the, the, the COVID-19, it have caused us to do something different. It has caused us to put on masks. And it has caused us to, to stay out of public if you got, you know, if, if you're closing in your right mind. Not to go where, be around a lot of folks. You're not, uh, and you're not comfortable around a lot of folks, especially if they're not uh, complying with some of the rules, masses, and so forth. But they just out doing what they want to, and so forth. You're not comfortable, so it it causes us to be in put some constraints on us and put some pressure on us. Now, let me allow me to give you some things that cause you some of the pressure. Now, don't tell nobody that I told you, because if you think that these are some not some of the things that cause you pressure. You're living in a different world. You must be in a Mars or someplace else. But if you here in the United States of America, some other country here on planted Earth, these are some of the things that cause you problems. And I'm just going to ask you the question. Now, you don't have to try to answer them. Don't try to answer them, you know, because somebody may be sitting and listening. So don't tell nobody I told you. But here's the question I'm going to ask you. Are you married? Are you married? That's all I'm saying. Now, these are questions that cause the depression and stress. Next question, are you single? Oh, are you employed? Are you unemployed? Oh, here's another question I want to ask you. Are you a church member? Are you a member of a church? Or you don't go to church? Oh, are you a supervisor on your job? What about a pastor's, a pastor's wife, a deacon, an elder, a minister, missionary, a mother, a father? A sister, a brother. What, oh, wait a minute, a deacon? Are you in the church community at all? Or do you work for the public? Or do you work for yourself? All of these things, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cause it stress. They cause it stress. They cause problem in our life. And so they, 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 they causes us depression. And that you got to know how to come out of depression. First of all, you got to realize that you are in it. Something caused you to be depressed. And you have to admit that you are depressed, that you got stress, that you got unnecessary worry. There's things that have happened that causes you don't know how you're gonna pay this next bill. You don't know how you're gonna get your children back in school. You didn't you 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 got constant you got you it's working on it two ways. One way you don't want them to go to school and get the virus. You want to make sure it's a safe environment. The other thing is they eating you out of house and home. They at home but they eating you out of it. The lights are on, television on, radio on, computers on, everything on. So these bills are going up while little frog and little snake is at home. And so that got your problem. That caused depression. Lord, help me here. That caused depression. And so that caused stress. That caused you to be uh, uh, trouble. And so what happened? I'm going to give you a good example of what, 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 when stress comes and what happened in stress. Now, Elisha, a man of faith, a man of God, a man that was doing the work of God, and he was doing the work of God under my God miracle. He said to God, he said to the people, I want you to choose who is God. I want you to build an altar. And, and, and if the God that answered by fire, he is the God. 
So the people of Baal had 450 prophets. They build the, the, they build the altar first, and they build the altar, and he said, God, that answer by fire. And they start praying to God, God, to, to their God. They were calling on. Elijah said to them, said, maybe he's asleep. Your God is asleep. You may need to wake him up. Call on him and wake him up. And then they, they, they was getting upset. They were to cut themselves and all of those things. But there was no fire that came down from the morning until the mid-afternoon. Well, then Elijah built an altar, and he told them, and water was precious because there was a famine in the land, a famine that they had no rain, and the crops was not growing. And he said, bring in a barrel of water. And they took water and poured it on the altar. And then he said, put another one on. And they put another one on. And he got on his knees and called on God, and the fire came down and licked up the water out of the trenches, and the barrels and everything caught on fire, and they burned the offering to God. And the people fell on their face and said, the God of Elijah, the God of Elijah. Now, Elijah was feeling good. He saw the people was in the mood to worship God, and he commanded that they take the prophet of Baal and kill them, kill all of them. And, and while, while they was doing this, he had favor, and he announced an abundance of rain. Now, now watch this. He said, listen, there are going to be an abundance of rain, because you haven't had any rain for three years, and it's going to be abundance of rain. Well, well what, what is Elijah saying? Before this, Elijah had went, the Ahab that said he was going to kill him, Elijah had went into the wilderness. God sent him into the wilderness for three years. And for three years in the wilderness, he was fed every day by a raven, a blackbird, brought him meat and bread every day. The brook of Cherith was there for water for him to wash himself, to clean himself up, to drink water. He stayed there for three years. And I call that in the swamps, swampology. He was in swampology, getting the message from God, getting the understanding from God, what God wanted him to do. When he came out of there, he went to a widow's house for another six months or a year and stayed there uh, with the widow and she fed him. She only had a, a cup full of flour and a cup full of water. And, and she said, I mean, a little water and, and a little meal flour. And he, she said, I, I want to cook this and die for me and my son. And Elijah said, give me the first part. Don't give it to your son. Give it to me, the first part. And so so she gave it to him and he ate that. Then God sent him back to, uh, God sent him back to uh, uh, Jerusalem, uh, Israel. He sent him back there to talk to Ahab and to, to, to tell Ahab to bring his prophet in. And this prophet would not, could not bring down fire from heaven, but Elijah prayed and God brought down fire, licked up the water and the trenches and all over. My God, he licked it up. And these people was, was happy that God had did that for them. Now, they, Elijah was thinking that the people got water, they got God, they are happy, they are happy for me. It's going to be all good now. But let me tell you something. That's a dangerous place to be in. When you get a victory over one trial, don't think that there's not another trial. See, I was told at a young age that you are either in a storm or coming out of a storm or meeting a storm. But it's always going to be some storms in your life. And so you got to prepare for the storm when the sun is shining. You can't prepare for storms when you're in the storm. You got to know how to come out of the storm and help others out of the storm to be that person that keep you from being losing your mind. Because the devil is working on our mind. He wants us to be distressed. He he wants us to be tormented. He wants to torment our mind. He don't want us to be able to sleep. He don't want you to be able to work in the daytime. He don't want you to be able to sleep at night. He wants to give you trouble on every side. So Elijah thought that it was a calm time now. I've been in the wilderness for three years. I've been with the widow's house for a half a year. It's three and a half months. Uh, three and a half years I've been out. Now I come back. They saw God send the fire down from heaven and lick it up out of the trenches and the barrels and the burn on the altar. They would be happy for God now. But Jezebel, he had killed those prophets. And a word came from Jezebel and said to Elijah, said, Elijah, tell him by this time tomorrow, he's going to be the same as my prophet that he killed. I'm going to kill him. Now, I want you to think about something. Here's a man that have that have prayed to God, and God gave the widow food for a year, and God gave him a place to be at in, in, by the brook of church for uh, three years with a bird bringing him meat and bread every day to eat to keep him alive. God brings him back, and he was able to call down fire from heaven and destroy, destroy, when I say destroy, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, destroy the, 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 the altar, the burn the fire altar, Now, and the smoke went up from that. Then Elisha uh, comes and goes taking them up on the mountain and prayed 
And God, a little hand came up like a cloud, and the hand ran. Elijah said, we got to get off this mountain. And he got off the mountain and ran 30, almost 30 miles, beating the horses. That's the energy that he had. Then he get back, and a Jezebel. You got a Jezebel in your life. You got folks that don't like you in your life. You got folks that want to see you down in your life. You got people that never will be happy until they see you brought down. They want to see you brought down. They're against you. You think they're for you, but they're not. They're against you. And you may not even know they're against against you. But he got back and Jezebel said, by this time tomorrow, you and you're going to be just like my prophets. You're going to be dead. Now, Elijah heard those words. Here's a man of God, a man of faith. Hear those words. And the Bible said he left the city, took off running out of the city because what a one woman said. Now, what you, how do you handle that, Sister Dale? One woman tell you, you gonna, he, they, you, he, that she's going to have you killed. You done killed 400, had 450 prophets killed. You done had heaven to send down rain and fire. And then you run from what one woman said. Well, I asked God about that. I said, God, what happened? What happened to Elijah? Why didn't Elijah use his faith on Jezebel? Well, let me tell you something. Here's what some of us have. We sometimes take all of our faith and put it on one problem and not not, not thinking there's going to be another problem. And so he had put all of his faith on getting the drought in the drought, to getting water back for the crops, getting the, getting the favor of God to destroy the prophet, getting the favor of God to move out the evil. But he did not. At that time, he became relaxed after the rain, and he did not think about that Jezebel was going to come after him. So that was not in his program. He was not in his program. So there's a whole lot of things I want to tell you that didn't happen to us. You know why it didn't happen to us? I, and I've told this story several times, many times I've told it, but it's, it's, it's a revelation to me. It was a revelation given to me. How was it given to me? When I was a little boy, small, well, I won't say a little boy, when I was a kid, in my teen, well, we used to go to see uh, Batman and Robin. They was coming, they came out early. Batman and Robin. And every time at the end of Batman and Robin conclusion, they showed it in Siri. That Batman and Robin would be in trouble. It looked like they were going, walls were coming in on, forks were coming in, soldier was coming in on. They was about to be killed and it would go off. And then they would, it would have you where you're the next episode. And we was going to move then it only cost a dime to get in the movie and a nickel for, for popcorn. And so we got in there and we got popcorn and, 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 and candy for a nickel. And so, I mean, for 15 cents, we get in the movie for a dime and nickel to get popcorn. I know y'all know how old I am now because you certainly can't get that now nowhere. Now, that was almost like they thought they was giving away. So you had 25 cents, you had enough money to go to the movie, get popcorn and a drink. And my God, enjoy. And so we, every Saturday, and we would go to the movie. And, and when we go there, we're going back to see what was going to happen to Robin uh, Batman that was in trouble. Well, some way and somehow at that next showing, they got out of it. It looked like when they showed it, at first, everything was coming down. There was no way out, but they got out of it. And I used to wonder what happened. And I was grown before I found out what was happening because I found out that in movies, they write strips. That's right, they write strips. And so they have to follow the strip. And the reason why Batman or Robin didn't die, it wasn't in the strip. And the reason why that you and I are still here, we have not in this, not in God's strip. God has not wrote us off yet. We are still life, live, justice, peace, and honor, and, and confusion, and, 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 and persecution. God still have it in our strip. And he knows how we're going to come out. He knows the end before the beginning. Just like the, produ pro the producers know the end before the beginning. God knows our ending before our beginning. So what we need to do then, how do we get out of this? Depression is always caused by unexpected thing. He was not expecting Jezebel to say that to him. He was not expecting Jezebel to put a, a, a bond on his life. He ran almost, they said, from 18 to 30 miles. He ran in the swamp that far. And then when he got there, guess what happened? When he got there, he didn't know what to do. He was so depressed, he was basically out of his mind. I mean, that's what depression do. It take you out of your personality. So I can understand sometime now that some of the people that got that been through this and been putting on the mask, they're mad because they got to have the mask on. They're mad because some of, they're going with some they, other folks that are coming close to them don't have it. They're mad because they, they don't know what to do. They're mad because they can't figure this out. And so that's why we're having all of this turmoil. More shooting, more divorces, more struggle, more people uh, insane, more people doing stuff that they know they shouldn't do. Good people that you know was good people. Now they acting crazy and stupid. Well, they're under the struggle. They're under the press. And we got to pray for them and ask God to give them strength to make it. Now, he went a day into the 
the wilderness a whole day until they went 18 or 30 miles. And he sat down on a juniper tree. And when he was tired, he was so tired and that, that he couldn't even recognize his life. He didn't know what was going on. An angel came and touched him. And the angel touched him and said, get up, Elijah. And he got up and the angel prepared him a cake and gave him some water. He ate the cake and water. The angel did it again. And you know what? Elijah didn't even realize that the angel had did that. He was so far out of himself and so depressed and so so down in his life. He didn't even know that this angel had did this. He didn't care. And matter of fact, he said he did, went to praying to God that he would God that he would die. Let him die. He done did enough. He didn't want to be in this struggle. Let him die. We have a lot of suicide now. Now he was very depressed. He did it. He, he twice the angel fed him. Twice an angel feed you. You show up and an angel feed you, and you don't recognize an angel. You know if you see something strange, you're gonna get that some fear come in. You might run. You might do anything. Try to hide. He didn't. He was distressed. He had that pressure on him. There's no medicine that could have helped Elijah out of the, his depression. Any man-made medicine would have made him, would, that would only thing made him sleep more or kept him awake or uh, it slowed him down in his motion, but that was not a cure. Only God could bring, only God can bring us out of some of our depression, or some of the states that we are in. Only God can do it. And so we need to get back to God. Now, God therapy was to feed Elijah before he gave him any instruction. He couldn't send the angel there with instruction and the man was hungry and the man was tired. So you can't talk to tired people like you can refresh folk. You got to you got to get people, you know, in a refreshing state to talk to them. That's why sometimes, you know, a husband and wife, one is tired, one is confused, one is angry, one is disturbed, and you're trying to talk and have a decent conversation or trying to get a point over. Then let some rest. Let's set a time when we both are feeling well, when we both get our minds together with God and we can talk to each other but if we're blaming the blaming and naming game is not going to help us we got to make sure that we are in confidence with God some of you now that in this pandemic, you and your wife and your husband and spouse and your friends have broken up or not getting along because you're in distress and you don't know why, what happened, but it's the, the, the problem that's coming in daily. The stress of the children, the stress of money, the stress of confusion, the stress of the mass, the stress of what you're hearing every day on television, all of that, you've, you're taking it in and you take in so much and it's pressing you down. You got you weighted down now and you don't know how you're going to do it. Now, finally, I want to end this up in t in the, that Elijah. Elijah, after he got the food, he ended up in a cave, in a cave. And God, here's how nice God is. God said to him, what are you doing here? Tell me, what are you doing here? God that knows everything. He asked Elijah, God knows our problem, but he asked us, what are you doing here? Why are you, do, why are you acting a fool like this? What is the reason? Tell me. Have I let you down? Have I ever let you down? Have I ever did things to you that you didn't know? What is wrong with you? Why are you here? And the Bible said that a uh, wind came through, but God was not in the wind. There's a whole lot of winds that God is not in. Winds of turmoil. Then the Bible said that an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. But then that small, still voice, Elijah, what are you doing here? I'm going to give you some help. Elijah said, well, they killed all the prophets, and I'm the only one left. God said, Elijah, I have 7,000 prophets, 7,000 people in Jerusalem that have never bowed their knees to Naaman. I got Obadiah there that stays in, the, in, in, in Ahab's house. He helping some of the prophets. He got 100 prophets he's feeding every day. You're not the only one, but I'm going to give you a transition. When we are depressed, we can only see ourselves. That's when the danger come in, when you can only see yourself and you can't see nobody else. Open up your eyes. There's help for you today. Open up your eyes. There's God is getting ready to give up, put a blessing on us and we that bring us out of this. Open up your eyes and see what God is doing. Open up your eyes and thank God for bringing you through what you're already going through. Open up your eyes and see that God has made a way for you in the midst of this, Isaac. He did this. Open up your eyes and, and, and know that God is on our side. So he, he had to get Elijah to open up his eyes. And he said, listen, I'm going to send you some help. I want you to go by and anoint Elisha. You need some help. Anoint Elisha. He's going to come with you. I want you to go by and, 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 and anoint uh, 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 Jehu and Jehu to be king. 
Now, Jehu's a tough fellow, so you don't go in talking to him and telling him this. You just go send somebody in to anoint him and run out. Because he's he not one of them person that can play with. You got, he, he's a tough brother. I've, I built him that way. I'm going to stop Jezebel. And I'm going to do that. And this is what God is saying to us. I'm, I'm going to bring you out of your distress. I'm going to bring you out of it. How am I going to bring you out? I am the Lord that is in every place at, at every, all time. I am God that knows everything before things happen. I am God that brought you out of the turmoil that you was in in the first place. I'm the God that created heaven and earth. I know your Jezebel. I know your crooks. I know your ups and I know your downs. I know your ends and I know your out. Stop running from the devil. I know you've been depressed, but I want you to understand something. Behind every cloud the sun is still shining. You just can't see it. But if you get in the right place to uh, stand still and know that I'm God, you'll see the sun beaming through. And when the sun beams through, it burns up the cloud or the wind blows the cloud away. And there's a wind of the Holy Ghost coming through. And that Holy Ghost is going to blow away some of the junk and stuff that the devil have put in and brought into our life and had us been depressed and had us been struggling, having us thinking that we can't make it. But I stop by to tell somebody we can make it. You ought to post this and let some Somebody know they can make it. Get up off of your off your knees and start thanking God for bringing you out. Start thanking God that it is well. Start thanking God that I know that some way and somehow I'm going to make it. I know you've already brought me out of this. I know that all the stress and all the pain that I've been through, joy comes in the morning. That's what David said. Weeping just maybe do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm telling somebody that listen to me now, even if it's at a delayed time, joy is coming. God is going to bring that family back together. God is going to give you money to pay your bill. God is going to open up a door for you to get a better job than you than you got cast out. They, they, they laid you off and then called you back. But don't worry about that. Joy is here now. Here's your day now. Stop praying about it and start thanking God for the next move. God has put another move on us. Uh, uh, Sister Robert, that she put a deal. She put another rule on us that we got to shift to get it. We got to stand in the place and stand still and know that God is working. Stand still and know that God is the God that's going to bring us out of this depression. We're going to come out with more than we had. We're going to come out looking better than we did. We're going to come out like the Hebrew children came out of the fire. There was no, the clothes were not singed. There was no smelling of smoke on them. We're going to come out like Daniel did with the lounge and the lounge then. There were no bite marks and no stretch marks on it. He didn't there were, He didn't even smell like lounge. He didn't smell like he'd been in the fire. He, they didn't smell like they had been in the fire. They came out with joy. They came out with peace. They came out with happiness. You're coming out of this hill. Your mind is going to be healed. Your body is going to be healed. Your soul is going to be healed. Things are getting better. And my God, I believe with all of my heart that our best days are yet in front of us. We come through the storm, the hell, the high water. But God said, if the devil come in like a flood, I'll lift up a standard against him. So let, let's rely on God. Let's stay with God. Let's give God some praise for what he's doing. Let's give God some glory for what he's doing because God is on our side. God bless you this morning. Thank you so much for listening to Moments of Inspiration. So I just want to tell you that digging yourself out of your, your thing, God is with you. Don't worry about them that are criticizing you. It is well. It is well. It is well. So thank God for your listen. If you desire to send plant a seed into moments of inspiration, you can do that. You can you can you see that push pay is up there. You see that uh, not only push pay, but you see give a five. You see the address on the church 135 West Victoria Street here in the city of Long Beach, California, 90805. It's a good seed. It's a good seed. And if you belong to a church, you don't share your tithes. Your tithes belong to your church. But if you don't belong to a church, you can share your tithe with this ministry. And and we would appreciate them very much, Brother, Brother, Brother Valerie Freeman. We would appreciate it very much. Everything that you do, we appreciate it. I'm here today because God blessed many of you and some of you that I don't know to sow into the ministry. And as you sow into the ministry, God sows into your life. You don't give for just to be given. You don't give because it's, it, I'm giving because I got this or that. No, I'm giving because I'm sowing into, I'm planting in God ministry. And every seed you plant in God ministry, when you plant it, when you plant it out of your heart, it's coming up. Whatsoever a man sow it in your garden, that's what's coming up. You can't plant peas and expect cucumber to come up. No, you planted peas, they coming up. You planted rice, rice coming up. You planted blackberry, blackberry coming up. And you plant money, money's coming up. That's right. That's what you got to reap what you sow. Whatsoever a man sow it, that's what he should reap. And I thank God for you today. Let me pray. Father, I thank you. There may be somebody watching me and, and not saved. You don't know Jesus.
and they would grow thereby in that name that's above every name, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. And thank you so much for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration this morning with me. And if the Lord said the same, I will be back next Wednesday, same time with some more Moments of Inspiration. Until then, have a blessed day and may God best be yours. God bless you.